the news you can use. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Wells, about Zillow, and uh, what they've been doing. We talked a few days ago about Zillow having to shut down. I think it was last Monday they shut down their uh, operation in terms of buying property uh, across the U.S. Um, they had it was being run by and. They're using this artificial intelligence thing that uh, came from Amazon. They, they had not been evidently able to tweak it to get the right prices put in. And they ended up over the last month or two buying a tremendous amount of property over the market. And they've subsequently had some huge losses selling those properties, had to knock the prices down and dispose of them quickly. And that is why they pulled off the market until next year. Um, in addition to that, they said, and, they, and they're using as their excuse, that there are a number of markets that they dominated in the past, primarily starting with Wells Fargo, with the, sorry, I keep saying Wells Fargo, this is what I'm trying to drive, uh, starting with Phoenix. Um, and in the last two months, the Phoenix market has dropped by 6% per month. So that was a pretty high-end market. And... Um, you know, it, it has been a situation where they went in and bought basically at the top of the market expecting appreciation, and instead they've lost 10 or 12 percent on these homes. So, you know, they were buying homes at 500,000 in some of the nicer areas, 600,000, a million, some of the suburban, really nice suburban areas, a million and a half. And if they lost 10 percent during that period of time, that's, you know, 150,000 per house. That's a big deal. So uh, instead of going up 10, it went down 12 over a two month period. And this is happening in a number of markets across the country. Um, and if you wanna see some of the, the more damaged markets in terms of price drop, just go back and look where Zillow's bought uh, the last two, three months and you're gonna find them. Somehow they were able to, and, and maybe it's because of them uh, going in and offering you know, at the top of the market, they may have, inadvertently created some of their own problem because in markets like Phoenix, they tend to be the largest corporate player. Now in the, sub, in the, in the smaller markets, the Midwest markets, markets like uh, Houses of America, uh, Land Corp and places like that that buy kind of more mid-range uh, in-town rental type properties. Um, those markets have still held out. I, I've been selling off properties that I own in Pittsburgh. I just sold two more today um, because although those kind of areas like Pittsburgh haven't primarily gone up a lot, they don't go down either. And so it's kind of always a good time to buy and sell in some of these Midwestern cities. You won't find Zillow had a big presence. There. They tend to be in some of the, uh, the bigger, trendier cities, not so much in California, but along the West Coast and the Western states and in the South and in Florida. And uh, they've had their head handed to them um, by virtue of essentially letting a machine run their business. They, a, a lot of these quotes were done on an automated basis and uh, they just got clobbered. So you'll see some uh, red ink on their P&L for the third quarter, uh, potentially the second quarter of the year. They may have to go back and revise estimates. Um, but, uh, and they won't be buying anything until at least January. It could be longer for them to recoup some of their losses and recapitalize some of the money they've lost. But when you buy 3,000 houses a month and, you know, if you were to lose a few dollars on each, pretty soon it's real money. So um, I'm not sure what they're going to be going as for Halloween this year, but it, it's, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> anyway, um, that is the truncated version of news you can use for today.